Welcome to another teacher tip with Mr. Long. And this is technically not part three, but it's just part two A, some extra information regarding Google Forms. In our previous two videos, we showed you how you can create a Google Form. I just want to use this video to show you how you can look at the settings and just to see the settings of your Google Form. So when you have the settings, you can collect emails. So this will mean that the person has to be logged on to their Gmail account to be able to, to enter in the survey. And so you can say it must collect emails and you can say collect responses. In other words, um, if the respondent requests it, um, they can ask them if they want to get a copy of their response. So you can do that. You can limit them to one response or you can say they can only they can have multiple answers. So respondents will have to be logging to Google for be able to access the one response. So they must be re actually have a Gmail account. Um, respondents can edit after they submit. You can have these options available. They can see the summary of the information, the answers, and you can specify the file upload limits over here as well. Um, we did do that when we it, we put in our file uploads, but you can do it here as well. Um, some presentation details, you can show a progress bar, which is nice if you've got quite a few different sections. And, that's, and so whoever's filling in the survey can see how far they are in the filling out of all the questions. How, are they 90% done? Are they 50% done? If you want to, especially if you want to do a quiz, you can shuffle the question order so that they ask them in random options. Um, so maybe this person gets question one, two, and three, and the next uh, another student would get question three first, then one, then two. So you can shuffle those options if you want. Um, and you can show a link for them to be able to submit another response. Now, once they submit, there will be a generic message that appears. It says you bold and you filled in your survey. Um, if you want to specify what your message is going to be at the end, then you can do yes. So, so thank you. Thank you for filling in my survey. So there we go. So thank you for filling my survey from Mr. Long. From Mr. Long. There we go. I spelled from like that. Okay. So there we go. So from Mr. Long. So that's our custom confirmation message. And I just want to show you the quiz part because if you want to convert this to a quiz or if you want to make a quiz, what's going to be different? So when you have a quiz, you can immediately after each submission give them their marks if you're going to do that. Or you can do it later by your own manual collection. Um, Respondents can see if they miss questions, if they got correct answers or point values, you can actually take those off if you wanted to only give it to them later, for example. So you can do things like that. And when you do things like that, what, what happens is, um, is you get these little options over here. So if I click on a particular question, there's this answer key option that appears. And that gives me the say, which one is the correct answer? I can say how many points um, is the, the question and you can add answer feedback and so on uh, for correct answers is this. Um, so if I cancel this, I can say, hey, this is the correct answer. So I will say that is the correct answer. And then I'll give them feedback if they get it incorrect and correct answers. This is what they give them. You can even specify a video. Maybe you've got a nice video that demonstrates the answer. If they got it incorrect. So you can actually specify that as well. I'll give them a link to a worksheet that they must go read if they get that question wrong. So you can do those little features on, on, on different types of questions with regard to your answer key as well. So yeah, you can specify which ones are the correct answers. So this obviously only works if you've got a form where you actually have um, right and wrong answers and you actually want to allocate points for each question or marks and you can do that. So that's what you can do for your survey. So those are your options available to you. Um, and then if you want to view your form, you can just go, yeah, click on it. So there's what your form looks like. So this link over here, that is the link that you would send out to everyone to be able to access this form. Okay, so there we go. That's the little side note about the settings of your Google form. For more videos and teacher tips, go to our YouTube channel, click on that subscribe button, leave a like, leave a comment. We'd love to hear what videos you want us to make for you. And remember, don't do it the long way, do it the Mr. Long Way.